Well, <clears throat> I think the the problem is that to to democracy there is more than just having a constitution and conducting elections. Um, I think that uh, the major uh, uh, problem for Tunisia, and and that is, for example, one of the um, of the leg legacy of of uh, uh, Tunisian history, um, is that we have seen basically in in the seventies the rise of uh, what we call sectorial elites, so professional. Uh, um, organizations of uh, uh, lawyers, uh, then all the um, teachers, uh, judges, actually almost every professional corps is in one way or the other organized. And now since <laughs> 2011, we also have the police forces that are organized in, in, in a multiple uh, uh, police unions. And um, Tunisia has already been quite a corporatist uh, state and it seems that actually the revolution has strengthened this corporatism and actually this is going to be one of the major challenges for uh, for democracy because um, struggles among the professional cause not all do not always take place so to say within the framework of democratic institutions but in many cases are um, shortcutting uh, uh, processes where you would have deliberation where things would go through uh, uh, certain passes in the institutions um, and I think this is what we are now already observing basically since 2011 is a constant struggle among the different cores among the different professional cores uh, to try to gain so to say as many shares and privileges uh, an influence on the state and on the administration. Um, and that is something that is going to be a major challenge uh, for, uh, for Tunisia. And this is not simply solved by the fact that you have elections and uh, a constitution. Um, this will depend a lot on the way how now this constitution is actually going to be uh, filled um, with content how it's going to be transformed into laws, but also in practices. Unfortunately, uh, one of the weakest institutions, so to say, within the state is the parliament. And uh, members of parliament hardly have the competences, the training, but also the parliamentarian administration is not very strong. And it will be very difficult for them to um, stand above uh, the influence of the course, of the professional course, and stand above um, the influence of the executive and of the government. So this is going to be really interesting to observe to what extent the parliament as, uh, as an, the most important branch in a democracy um, is going to uh, emancipate itself, so to say, from um, groups of influence and from the, the government. Tunisia is not a rich country at all. There is, as I just said before, huge economic challenges. Budget is very tight. And um, so external aid, external help um, is going to be necessary. My fear is rather that now there is this sense that, okay, we have the, uh, we have the elections, we have the constitution, and that people lose, so to say, their interest and that especially that, that foreign aid loses its interest for, uh, for Tunisia and focuses more on other countries, perhaps in the region or somewhere else, and on other hot topics, so to say. Uh, the second element is that generally, when you look at foreign aid, parliaments are usually receiving very, very little uh, attention. Uh, which is bizarre because uh, all the aid is based on the notion of good governance, on the promotion of democracy and all the things. And that what you would expect is that you see a lot of effort put into strengthening the parliamentarian system. Um, this is not the case. Uh, this is somewhere an area perhaps also because of that lack of attention, there is less expertise in how to do it. 
um, but I think this is going to be essential for Tunisia. So I think external aid is going to be important. I think that it's important that parliament, parliamentarians, members of the parliament are understanding the importance of their role um, and develop the open-mindedness that is needed to um, to ask for uh, advice, for consultancy, uh, so that they can have um, a lot of information, a lot of data, uh, a lot of ideas on which they can then take their uh, decision. So I hope it's going to be a parliament that is going to deliberate a lot, but that there is also going to be a lot of background work in the sense of preparing uh, laws and uh, and decisions. Otherwise, I don't think that, that the process and that the uh, the consolidation of the democracy will be successful. So right now the signs are more that we will face something like a kind of hybrid regimes um, where um, one of the major threats is, is actually now the, the security, securitarianism. Uh, that is that um, uh, security forces, security institutions uh, will use uh, terrorism or uh, uh, the sense of insecurity I was talking about before uh, to uh, circumvent uh, uh, political uh, democratic and uh, processes and um, install uh, laws and also privileges to the security forces which might put them in the end above politics.